Uh, when you when you got older, you were a police officer for a while, weren't you? Yes, I uh, I spent four years in naval aviation during Korea, and when I got out, I did a little bit of work as a carpenter, and, and then went on the police force. Mm-hmm. And yes, I was on the police force in Baltimore for about eight years. Did that give you a particular perspective about the law? Yeah, it gave me more of an insight uh, than what I had gained through my grandfather's living room. Uh, I was on for about a year when uh, a sergeant gave me a call to meet him under the Russell Street Vidoc in Baltimore on a Sunday. His Sundays were very calm days in those days. You know, you didn't have much to do. You get the Sunday paper and go park under a bridge and read it. Mm-hmm. And so I, I pulled up there, and he got out of his car and came over and got in mine. And he was saying to me, he says, well, Cut Myers, he's been on a year now, and uh, I think you're an R.A. guy. It's about time you learn how things work. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then he went on to tell me about uh, there's no problem with the organized crime in, in, in Baltimore or in Maryland because it's, it's run by the police department. <laughs> <laughs> and the rackets are run by the police department. And... The governor's involved, and uh, he even named little Willie Adams at that time. He was the, ran all the numbers and everything, and, and uh, he's telling me I ought to get my share, too. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, you know, uh, the territory that you uh, cruise gets so much, this is what you would get. And, and I listened to that for about a half an hour or so, and I said, well, can I ask you a question? <laughs> And he said, uh, sure, go ahead. I said, well, Sergeant, I don't understand. I said, how do all these people expect to excel in a society they're destroying? Mm-hmm. And he took a long moment, and he looked at me, and he says, you're a nut. <laughs> <laughs> he got out of the car and got in his and drove off from that time on. Uh, I was a nut among about four others in the station house. Mm-hmm. That's the kind of the way it was. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, it got so so that I couldn't uh, I couldn't stay. I mean, I always believed in justice, and and it was just uh, a couple other things took the cake. You know, I remember one time I uh, uh, arrested this fellow on, on uh, a witness's testimony that he had stolen her purse. He was a black guy, and he and uh, she described him with a big silver dollar. A scar on the back of his neck, and so I, I, I went down to the jumbo store where all the jitterbugs hang out. You know, and I went in there and I saw this guy, and I brought him out. And it's an old saying: I guess they all look alike to people, unless you work them every day, like I was doing. Right. And uh, and she she says that's him, and so I took him through the preliminary hearing, and and uh, went up to the court. And he got the uh, time, and about 30 days later, I got information from one of my informants that I had the wrong guy. So I investigated and checked it out, and boy, I did have the wrong guy. Mm-hmm. So the next setting in the magistrate's court, I, I went in and I, uh, I told the magistrate, I, you know, I waited for the court, and it was the last one, I just went up and talked to the judge. I said, I want to tell you i got to reopen the case because i got the, this wrong man. And he looked at me and he says, what are you, a crusader? <laughs> <laughs> I said, how in the hell would you like to be sitting in that jail if you were innocent? Mm-hmm. You know? And I got a little loud and the captain came out and he said, uh, get out of there, Cotmar. And that was it. They just let the guy sit there. It's really? Like, yeah, it's just callous. Yeah. I, I, I had another uh, time when uh, down on Camden Street, right around where Camden Yards is now. Mm-hmm. There was a clothing manufacturer down there, made, manufactured men's suits. His name was Rubin, Max Rubin. And, when, and, and he had a great big hallway there. And the hallway must have been 12, 13 feet wide. And he had these uh, pipe racks, and he had maybe 100 or, two, or 150 suits hung on these pipe racks. Mm-hmm. And they were all along the hallway, and the trucks could back right up to the door <laughs> and just load them right into the trucks and mm-hmm. take them out. Well, one day this truck backed up to the door, and he loaded a few racks of suits and drove off. And he wasn't wasn't supposed to do that. Mm -hmm. So we got a call, you know, and Max found out that somebody stole a bunch of his suits. And we started (laughs) investigating. About 30 days later, 
I got this information that the guy who did it was working out in Pimlico Racetrack, uh, as a, what they call him, these, uh, some kind of groom, you know, mm -hmm. a groom. And uh, so I put a, uh, got a, a warrant out for him, and, and uh, they picked him up out there and brought him down, and we went ahead and charged him. We had enough evidence to charge him. So the preliminary hearing was, and Max, Max Rubin came down for the hearing, and I'm in the courtroom, and I, I noticed in the back was the ward boss, Fats Garrett, his name was. He was 25th wardy, you know, he was the political ward boss. And so I, I, I'm looking there, I'm looking at the judge, you know, and, and finally the case comes up, and, and I, we had him dead to rights. I mean, I, it was irrefutable evidence. And uh, the judge says, well, I don't think that we have enough evidence to go up on, you know, up to the court and dismissed. <laughs> and I looked back at Fats Garrett standing back with a cigar. I said, put the cigar out, my, you know, Fats. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, when we're going out the door, the guy I arrested looked at me and he says, I got a good tip for you in the fifth. I just looked at him. He said, Legal Larson, he bet it. <laughs> and out the door he went. And I, man, I was getting hot. And Max Rubin yeah. says, No, let it go, boy, let it go. But you know, you just sit there a while. Right. Yeah. And I, uh, you know, a few things like that where I just couldn't stay.